reporting started. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our new day day for the iPad app webinars. We're going to be doing these on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock central from now on. Um, and so this will be the first one on Tuesday. And today we're going to look at a tool called Abilipad. I'm going to open it up here. It's this. Uh, it's right in the middle of my screen. It's right there. This Abilipad app. This is a. Um, this is an adaptive writing tool that combines a uh, customizable keyboard with word prediction and text to speech to allow students that have disabilities to be able to use their strengths to, to type on the iPad itself. Um, so as you look at the top of the screen, oh it, and it costs it retails for nineteen ninety nine in the app store. Um, they have just done it. If you've done a, used the bill pad in the past, they've just done an update that's made it much easier and much nicer to use. If you look at the top here, you see there's two things. There's notepads and there's keyboards. With notepads, when we open that up, we can start typing within a notepad. I'm going to hit keyboards because I would like to show you kind of how we can do uh, different things. We can create different keyboards. So what we've got on this screen is there's three folders right now. The middle folder that says templates, that's the one that comes with it. And then you can start adding your own keyboards as you go. Um, but you can do anything with these keyboards. We can make these keyboards, uh, we can make the keys larger, we can change the size, we can change the color, we can change the font, we can add pictures. I'm just going to pull up one keyboard to show you kind of something that I've done with it. This is one called Weather. If I open up that keyboard, I, I, if you look toward the bottom of this, you're going to see it was a, it's a keyboard that I created that has a, set, a couple of phrases to start sentences followed by images on the bottom. If you look at the top, this is in our editing keyboard mode. We've got numbers, letters, punctuation. We can add those to different pieces of the keyboard here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to go back to the home page quickly. And I'm going to show you how, what, what a blank keyboard looks like and then how we can kind of mess around with that. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go first and I'm going to hit uh, add. Well, let's let's take I guess take a look first at the grouped big keys. So if I, if I hit that big key folder, what you should be able to see there is I've created four keyboards where I've made the keys larger and easier to hit. And I want to add my fifth keyboard that's going to have X, Y, and Z on it. Um, the way I would do this then is I'm going to close that. I'm going to hit the add button up in the top left corner, the plus key. It's going to show me a new keyboard sitting there. I'm going to take and hold on that keyboard, and I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it on top of my grouped big keys folder. When I do that, it should disappear into there so that we can now, uh, now it's in that folder. So if I open up my grouped big keys folder, you're going to see my previous four keyboards, and you're going to see my new keyboard over there. If I tap the new keyboard, this is going to open up a template for what the keyboard is going to look like. If you look across the bottom of this page, you're going to have basically your standard iPad keyboard layout. Up across the top, we're going to have a whole bunch of different letters, numbers, punctuations that we can then add to the keyboard at the bottom. So what I want to do here is I want to make keys bigger. I'm, I'm building this keyboard for a student that needs keys in a larger size. So I'm going to take and I'm going to tap two keys. And you're going to see they're going to turn blue when I tap each one of them. And then if you look toward the middle here at the button that's got two arrows pointing together, if I tap that, it merges those two keys together into one larger, one larger key. You can only merge two keys at a time. So I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to continue to tap keys. And then I'm going to merge them. And I'm going to do that again. And it might take a second to catch up with these. All I'm doing is tapping on different keys and merging them together so that we can create one large key out of these. We're, we're doing six, we're ultimately merging six keys together to make one large key. And I'm going to do that, we'll just do that three times here. So I'm going to continue. If, it's, if it takes a second to keep up, to catch up, eventually it will. All I'm doing again is tapping two keys and then merging them together. 
I'm going to do that for three keys here so that we have our X, Y, and Z, remember, is what we're trying to add to our keyboard. So I'm going to add that X, Y, and Z. I will merge those three together. Okay. So now that I've merged those keys together, if I wanted to get rid of the rest of the keys to the right of those three big keys, if you select one and hit the trash can, it removes that. So we could get rid of all of those if we wanted to. Now to add something to that key, to each of these keys, I'm going to tap on a key. You're going to make it blue, and then I'm going to go and tap the letter that I want to add to it. Now when I tap a letter, it could be a letter, it could be a phrase, it could be a number. We could put anything into this that we wanted to. I'm going to put X, I'm going to put Y, and then I'm going to hop over one last one, and I'm going to add Z to this one. So now I've got my three things in there. Those are very small representations of those letters, so we can change the size of those. To change the size, you tap the double A button here, and it's going to give you a slider bar. And I'm going to take that slider bar, and I will slide it back toward the high end, and it's going to change the size of those keys for me. The other thing we can do here is we can change the background color of these keys. To change colors, you see the three, the red, green, and uh, blue dots there. If we tap that, that gives us access to colors for the text, for the background, and for the grid. And it gives us lots of different colors. If you look on the bottom, it says apply only the selected keys. So we could make, if we turned that on, we could make each key a different color if we wanted to, the background and the um, the text within that key. We could make it a different color if our student had a visual impairment and needed the keys to stand out a certain way. I'm going to leave that off right now because I want to make the background of all of these keys yellow to make them stand out a little bit more. I'm going to leave the text color black. If I want to change the text color, I would just tap text up here. If I want to change the grid color, I'd tap grid. I'm going to leave it on background and I'm going to choose this bright yellow over here. And when I do that, you should see all of my background, all, all of my backgrounds turn to yellow. So I have done that. If we look across here, we could change with this with this F button here. We can change the font of the. We can change the different. We can change the font of the keys. We could change. Um, we can. I'll show you in a little bit how we can add audio or images to these keys. Um, we can put those keys together. We can unmerge keys. In fact, let's merge a couple of these keys together and add an image just to show you how that's done. So I'm going to go back in here, choose two keys, and merge them together. I'm going to choose two keys again and merge them together and do that one more time to get a large key. I'm going to select that key, and then I'm going to go to the, pick the, the button next to the microphone. That is going to give me access to the iPad library or the Abilipad library. Within the Abilipad library, we have some images that uh, are available through Abilipad. Within the iPad library, we've got access to any picture that we've taken on here. Um, I am going to go to the Abilipad library, and we will just let's put well, one of these. Let's put the bear in there. So if we choose the bear picture, it's going to add that to our. Um, to our key. Now what we'd probably want to do is tap within that key and type the word bear in as well because it's not going to do anything if it's just a picture of a bear. But if we type the word bear, now if we were to select that key, it would, um, it would add the bear or it would type bear for us. Okay, so we've got our keyboard the way that we want it here. I'm going to go and hit the home button up at the top. And it's going to take me back to my main page, and it's going to have all these keyboards that we've created. Now, since I want this to show up in order, I'm going to tap on this keyboard and hold it down, and I'm going to move it after the T. It's not going to move. Oop, sorry. It's going to take us. I'll, I'll let you come back here. What we're going to do here is we're going to rename that keyboard so that it comes after the T. And to rename it, I'm going to tap where it says New Keyboard. And we'll get access to the entire name of that keyboard. We'll just select it all. And we'll call this um, X. So that's what starts it. And then I'll hit Done. 
And now you'll see my layout. It lays out A, G, L, T, X. So I've got that laid out the way I want. Now, let's look at notepads. So I'm going to close my keyboards. I'm going to choose notepads. And you see there I have one notepad. It's an example that's set up. If I choose examples and open up that notepad, I have my keyboards connected to this. So if we look down at the bottom now, there's five dots. Down at the bottom here, there's five dots. That indicates that there's five keyboards connected together. And then what it's using is every keyboard within that folder that we made. So if I wanted to type my name, Jim, I could scroll, slide from uh, right to left across here and change keyboards. And I have a big key there now for J. I'll tap the J. It'll type the J. And you can see here, it starts to predict what I'm trying to write. It's, there's my word prediction uh, up to the top right of the keyboard. So I'm going to tap the I, and we'll let those change. And you're going to see there's Jim in there right now. If you want to listen to one of these, you can tap on the bubble. This is where it gets a little bit sensitive. If you tap on the bubble, Jim. it plays back in an audio format what's on there. If you tap on the word, Jim. it speaks it and enters it into our document. Um, it also runs spe uh, spell check. So if we spell something incorrectly, um, let's say we spelled giraffe, J, I, and we'll scroll over to another keyboard, and we'll say R, and we'll scroll back two keyboards to A, and we'll say A, and then we'll scroll one more keyboard. Oops, I didn't put F in my keyboard, <laughs> so we're not going to be able to add the F from here. But you can see here it has, it does put, it, this is not predicting anymore, it's trying to correct on the right side, so, or on the left side. So spell checking comes up on the left side, word prediction comes up on the right side. I apologize for that. Um, but you see here, the idea being, I can use, I can create these keyboards, I can use multiple keyboards together, I can change colors, I can change sizes, um, I can change keyboards as well. So if I was done using this keyboard, I can go up to the gear area here, tap on that, that's our settings, and it's going to give me several options, the first one being keyboards. I'm going to choose keyboards. And I can use the folder for the grouped big keys like I was. I could use the templates or I could use weather. I'm going to go to this weather one. And so within this weather one now, I created this one where I merged keys together and added phrases and pictures and also recorded things into this. So remember when we were working with the keyboard, there's a little record button. You can record your voice into one of these buttons. So now with this, we could have our students doing a unit on weather. They might be struggling with writing. We can give them everything they need right there. And they could play, they could tap on today it is, and then choose, um, let's say, sunny. And you could hear that was me speaking, because I recorded the word sunny onto that as well, so it would play back when I added that into my document. And then I can hit the period. And then if I go up to the top right corner, there's a speech bubble there, and I tap that. Jim, today it is sunny. It'll read that back and highlight as it reads. That was a little bit slow. The voice was a little bit poor, but it does. there's our readback. So we've got our readback. We've got our word prediction. We've got our spell check. We've got our customizable keyboards here. Let me show you just a few more of the setting options if we go up into settings. So we saw keyboards as an option. Let me look at preferences quickly here. Or I'm sorry, look, look at pages quickly. So if I tap pages, you'll see the page that I'm typing within. If I select that page, now I've got some options across the bottom of the screen. And here, I can change the size through the same way we did it on the keyboard. I can change the size hitting the double A button down at the bottom and dragging that cursor across. I could change the font if I want. There's several different fonts. 
and here's what we can do. If we have students that have struggled seeing, you know, uh, black on white, we could change our text to maybe um, maybe being uh, yellow text. And so we'll grab this little crosshairs and drag it up into the yellow area. Oop. We'll drag, then we'll go down to the bottom slider and we'll take that point and drag it all the way to yellow. So maybe yellow on black is what the student needs. Then we'll hit choose. And we'll see our text has changed to yellow. Then if we hit our little three dot color button and we can change our background by sliding that bottom thing over to the black. We can change our co background color to black and hit choose. And then we're going to see it's going to show up as yellow on black. So now if I hit the settings button, it's going to take me back and it's going to change that, uh, that paper so that the background color is black, the text color is yellow. It might stand out a little bit easier, be a little bit easier to see. Just a few more things within settings and then we'll be done here. If we look at um, preferences, we can change, we can turn word predictions, spell check on and off. We could have it speak as we type. We could have it speak sentences, words, keys. We can change the rate of speech. You heard mine was a little bit slow. I could, I could crank that up if I wanted to. Under voice, we've got several different voices that we could choose, uh, different uh, accents that we could choose there. We can share these things via email. We can print them as well. And I will point out one other thing with the bill of pad here. If we go back to the home area, I know this is all moving kind of quick, and I go to keyboards, and I hit the arrow key in the top left, I can access things via Dropbox or the Abilipad library. And what the Abilipad library is, is it takes us to a website that has pre-made keyboards that other people have shared that you can then go and download. Um, and here we'll, we'll change it to the uh, keyboard corner here. And you can see there's different keyboards that you could download and then use on your own before you even go make them. So this is a pretty well-rounded app. Their new update has made this a very, very nice, easy to use tool. Um, we can make as many different keyboards as we want. We can link them to as many different notepads that we want. And we can have different student, we have the same student using several different, uh, different um, keyboards throughout the day. A downside to this is that it only, I mean, these keyboards are only going to work within a bill of pads. So it's not going to be something that's going to work if you want to open up the internet and have the student search for things on the internet through Safari using a keyboard. It's not changing the main keyboard within um, the iPad. It's just making it so that we can write with an adapted keyboard within a bill of pad. Um, overall, it's a very good app. Um, I'd certainly recommend it, and I'd be glad to answer any questions if anybody ever had them on there. But that's a bill of pad. Uh, good luck using it, and uh, I hope it works out well for you.